All right, I think we'll get started here. Um, hello and welcome to the first in a series of webinars uh, about how engineers in the various engineering disciplines can benefit from cloud computing. My name is Thomas Francis. I'm head of products for Uber Cloud. We help engineers and scientists use uh, cloud computing to excel in their chosen fields. Now, why is cloud computing important to you as an engineer? Uh, in order to answer this question, uh, we'll take a brief two minute history lesson and look at the various industrial revolutions. And uh, we'll try to draw a couple of insights um, from these lessons from history. Uh, and then we'll jump into the nuts and bolts of today's webinar, um, which is titled Cloud Computing Benefits and Best Practices uh, for Mechanical Engineers. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Okay, so this is the story of uh, the various industrial revolutions that have taken place over the last 300 years. Um, back in the 1700s, the theme of the first industrial revolution was mechanization. Uh, now this revolution was powered by steam and coal, and there were railways and cotton mills. So it was essentially the mechanization of labor. Now the second uh, revolution was the age of electricity. And uh, this was characterized by steel mills, factories, um, and electrically powered mass production and uh, division of labor, things like that were, uh, were salient features in this revolution. Now the third revolution was one that most of us have lived through. This is the computing revolution. And uh, this was characterized by technologies um, like the transistor, uh, microelectronics, cheap computing, and uh, Moore's law uh, is another uh, example of of uh, specific technologies and, and uh, architectures in this revolution. Now we're in the middle of a, of a new revolution, the fourth uh, industrial revolution. And this involves the fusion of the online and the physical worlds. So this revolution is characterized by data and intelligence. It's powered by, by data and intelligence. And the technologies in this revolution are uh, technologies such as the internet of things, IOT, artificial intelligence, smart manufacturing, and um, AR, VR, etc. Now, the key insights that I want to draw from these revolutions are twofold. Um, you see them at the bottom of the screen there. First of all, the pace has been quickening. The, the, uh, the lag in time between different revolutions has been shortening. In addition to that, each revolution builds on the technologies of the past, of the previous revolution. And it also commoditizes many of the technologies of the previous revolution. So as an example, when the computing revolution happened, it didn't make sense to generate your own electricity anymore. So instead you look to it as a utility, you just buy it from somewhere and, um, and be done with it. Now, similarly, if you want to take advantage, uh, I think we lost the screen. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, yes, I, uh, I'm not sure if it was my connection or yours and uh, your audio was gone. Uh, so I'll just continue sharing my screen now. I can hear you. Ah, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so just one second. Coming back. All right. It's, it's taking a while. Yeah. So let me just talk through uh, the last part there. So you okay. saw some technologies there around um, smart manufacturing, etc. So when when each revolution happens it doesn't make sense uh, to focus on the technologies of the previous revolution anymore. You just, you need them, but you consume them as a utility. So, so the, the lesson for us then is if you want to take advantage of the technologies of the current revolution, then you have to really stop wasting your time managing computing resources and uh, consume them from a utility. That's the only way you can start taking advantage of some of the higher level functions uh, that are part of the data and intelligence revolution that we're, we're in the middle of. So with that um, introduction, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, uh, who's Ibru, uh, who you already heard. Um, she'll talk about the specific challenges that engineers face and how cloud computing can help them. Ibru is an engineer and an analyst. Uh, she has a lot of experience with computer-aided engineering. She's worked at companies such as Dassault Systems. She's also an entrepreneur. Um, Ibru's education uh, includes a bachelor's in aerospace engineering and a master's in computer systems. Um, Ibru, 
Thank you, uh, Thomas. Uh, so let me uh, go to the next slide first. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll start by giving you a brief background on Uber Cloud. Uh, so Uber Cloud was launched in 2012 by Burak Yenier and Wolfgang Gensch with the mission to make high performance computing a reality for every engineer. Uh, so traditionally, as you may all know, HPC was available only on premise computing clusters and this required a lot of expensive hardware and uh, it also uh, came with a lot of ongoing operational costs. Uh, so it was very difficult for every engineer to get access to HPC. But today, Uber Cloud makes it easy for engineers to use the cloud so they can achieve the benefits of HPC without any of the uh, shortcomings. And uh, so here, a very, I'll uh, give you a brief history about Uber Cloud. So again, in 2012, Brock, Brock and Wolfgang, they realized that many issues needed to be solved to get cloud ready for HPC. And uh, so we partnered with scientists, engineers worldwide and started cloud experiments. So today more than 200 experiments have been conducted. These were sponsored by Intel. And with the learnings from these experiments, in 2030, we started developing HPC technology. In 2014, we launched online marketplace and today uh, Uber Cloud is available on more than 45 stores. In 2015, it was added to the Asia marketplace. And by 2016, we had major CAE software ready to be deployed on the cloud for our partners and customers. And we also received, uh, or we also partnered up with HPE in uh, 2016. Uh, so Uber Cloud is validated by community, by uh, leading software vendors and by Microsoft. Uh, today, we have over 4,000 members uh, consisting of scientists and engineers in the community. And Uber Cloud is recognized by Gartner, IDC, 451, HPC Wire. And also, we have partnerships with major CAE software vendors. And Uber Cloud is also exclusive CAE software on the Azure marketplace. And uh, last, I also want to mention that we have dozens of joint POCs with Fortune 100 companies and uh, national laboratories. So now uh, I wanna talk about the typical CAE workflow and the challenges with this workflow we face as engineers every day. Uh, so within the product development life cycle, uh, design and prototyping and testing, they're both dependent on simulation. So today, often product design is driven by simulation, which means lots of studies, simulations need to be completed to finalize a design. And to reduce prototyping and testing, we need a validated model proven to give accurate results. So validating this simulation may uh, require running tens or hundreds even simulations uh, based on the complexity of the model or number of test cases. And all, as all of these numbers adds up, uh, so does the time to bring the product to market. And this puts lots of pressure on us, on CAE engineers. So if we look at these three steps of the uh, CAE process, uh, each step comes with its own uh, difficulties or challenges. And so I'll, uh, let's look first at pre-processing or modeling. So as engineers, often our number one challenge is to create models that run fast, but also capture the realistic behavior accurately. So for example, I mean, uh, so the factors that might influence your simulation runtime will of course change depending on your analysis type. But uh, for example, for an explicit analysis, while I would wanna use a finer mesh to capture a more realistic behavior, this would cause my simulations to run longer. Or on the other hand, if I would go with a coarser mesh, 
it would be difficult to capture realistic behavior, especially for complex geometries with small features. Or another example could be uh, capturing the correct contact behavior uh, between some uh, complicated uh, parts. And uh, so next, uh, let's talk about simulation. So simulation itself, it is a highly iterative process. I need to run many simulations simultaneously, compare the results to know what works best and what doesn't and introduce, you know, any findings, modeling changes to all of my uh, associated or interconnected models. And then uh, I will have to run more simulations uh, after doing this. And unfortunately, uh, many companies have limited computational resources. So often we have to work with outdated, slow machines. Uh, and as an example, even your two-year-old machine you might consider as new might be actually very slow compared to the latest technology available out there. And so it takes simulations long times to run. And on top of that, as engineers, we have to submit jobs into shared queues with our colleagues or wait for licenses to become available so that we can use them. And this, all of these things, they cause just further uh, delay uh, in getting to the results. And uh, often for CAE engineers, especially in small companies, there is no dedicated IT. So which makes it difficult to utilize additional CAE software. Uh, let's say uh, for my studies, I decided I need to run some optimizations, but I don't have the software. So if I request this, it will take days, if not week, if not a week, uh, to get you know the software purchased, to get it installed until I have it running. This all will just cause a further delay in my uh, product development process. And then for post-processing, um, so as a CAE engineer, usually I will want to review my results as soon as my simulations are completed and submit jobs immediately and uh, so that I can get to new results faster. And, but often, you know, simulations will uh, complete at very odd times and I might not be in the office and it will be difficult uh, to work uh, remotely. I mean, it's time consuming, downloading, uploading, uploading large models, and it's even more difficult leaving simulation results and manipulating a, a 3D model on a remote machine. And this all, what I mentioned here, it also causes uh, collaboration to be difficult because I won't be able to re uh, share my results with uh, my remote development teams, uh, maybe located overseas, and they won't be able to contribute uh, into the uh, project. So, um, and looking at all of this, now uh, let's see how uh, CAE on the cloud uh, can help me with address all of these challenges. So I'll get access to powerful cloud hardware, powerful computational uh, resources, get as many CPUs as I want, tailored to my specific needs. And I'll be able to run simulations in parallel and get to results much faster. So, and how does this uh, affect this uh, workflow? So uh, first of all, for pre-processing, now I can you know, uh, create more detailed models. Uh, with finer meshes and capture more accurate behavior. And I, ha I don't have to worry about computational costs anymore. For simulations, now I'll be able to run sim simulations instantly, simultaneously, without having to wait on queues. And I'll be able to get to the best design much faster. And I'll be working with a, the top of the line uh, computational machines. And I'll also have ongoing support for all of my needs, including adding new software licenses, setting up uh, new software, as well as you know, adding more nodes for simulation. So if I want to work with something new, I can start doing so uh, immediately. 
And for post-processing, now I'll be able to access my results from anywhere. And all I'll need will be basically to have an uh, internet connection and a web browser. And with the technology today, with powerful GPUs and advanced technology, I'll be able to post-process my output on the cloud, review my results, you know, manipulate the uh, 3D model remotely, analyze it, and I'll also save time by not having to move the large simulation files back and forth. And I'll be also able to submit new jobs instantly without having to go back to the office. And because of all of this, and because my data is in the cloud, it will also be a, uh, easier now uh, to collaborate with my colleagues worldwide. So other development teams now can also easily review my results and they'll be able to make uh, recommendations on how to uh, further the design. So uh, as an example of uh, what it feels like to work in a cloud environment, uh, I will show you a preview of Uber Cloud. So after you sign up, you receive a welcome email with your login information. And actually all you need is a web browser and internet connection. So you click on the link, enter uh, your password here and ta-da, you're on the cloud. So it's very easy. And as you see, it just looks like your regular desktop. So as an example, uh, here I have an I have Abacus Viewer open to review some simulation results. So the graphics is really nice and clear. And I have uh, here, I had requested Abacus software to be installed and you can see uh, uh, it's the icon on my desktop. And you know, I can just continue using my existing workflow. So there's nothing new to it. I don't have to reinvent anything. Uh, if I want, I can just continue working through a graphical user interface. I can do pre-processing, post-processing, submitting jobs, just like the way I used to. Or if I have a different workflow, if I submit jobs through a terminal window, I can continue doing so. And I can even run my existing scripts to post-process my results, create reports, so I can do anything I'm doing right now uh, on the cloud. So uh, here I have an, actually, I have a screen recording. Uh, I recorded this the other day while I was viewing this animation of the blocks. So this is an uh, example abacus problem, simulating the collapse of a stack of blocks, assuming uh, one block was removed just before. It's, a, I mean, it's not a very complicated model, but there's uh, still lots of action going on. And, you know, it's exciting to see this. I'll show you the video. So, I mean, I personally find this amazing because technology has gotten so far that I can view an animation like this remotely on the cloud. Like, I remember things like this being impossible before. So this is a huge milestone. And uh, let's talk a bit about the cloud CAE best practices. Now, if you decide you're ready to move your simulations to the cloud, uh, here are some best practices that you should look for in a provider. So these are initial setup help, graphical user interface access, software maintenance, ongoing operations, support, training. So a cloud provider should not just provide you with access to the cloud and hardware resources. They should also partner with you, set up and validate your CAE software that you have confidence in your analysis. And again, on some cloud CAE environments, the experience you will get will be limited to submitting jobs to a Linux command line and waiting for the results. So you will want to continue working with graphical user interface of your application and you know, do interactive design exploration, just like you're doing right now. So you don't wanna change your workflow. 
And software maintenance is very important because you want to make sure you always have access to the latest version of the software. Adding, removing notes from the cluster so that you can save money while the cluster is not utilized 24 hours a day. This should be a part of the offering. And of course, support art and training are also important. Uh, if anything is broken, it should be fixed and you should be you know, trained on how to use their services. Mm, here, this is a, a good demonstration of uh, how um, Cloud HPC can speed up your uh, simulations. So this is a Cloud HPC benchmark study for the transonic flow around an airfoil. And uh, so it was, um, it is an ANSYS model and it has over 100 million nodes and over 100 million elements. So on top, you see like how the model nicely scales up from small number of cores going to large number of cores. And this is run on Microsoft Azure. And at the bottom, you see that uh, an Uber Cloud Azure environment performed 53% faster than a two year old on premise cluster with identical core counts. So this is a great uh, demonstration of the benefits of HPC. And uh, so let's summarize all of these. So with CAE on the cloud, uh, now I'll be able to, I'll get confidence in my analysis. So I don't have to do trade-offs anymore. I can remotely run simulations fast while using more detailed modules and capture realistic uh, behavior. And I can bring my products faster to market. I can get access to additional computational power immediately. And I can uh, run simulations faster, simultaneously. And this all will speed up my uh, product development life cycle. And global accessibility. Cloud can be accessed from anywhere to run jobs, post-process real results. And my colleagues overseas now can take advantage of my licenses while they're idle. And I can also unlock new capabilities. So unlimited hardware means I can run multiple analysis in parallel, do design optimization, and use new codes. Uh, so here uh, I have a slide about the Living Heart project. Um, today, uh, amazing new studies happen because best in line computational hardware is easily accessible by researchers and engineers worldwide, helping them to speed up their simulations. And this is a great example. Uh, so this is a recent study by Stanford University, and this was conducted in partnership with Uber Cloud. So using HPC on the cloud, scientists at Stanford University were able to run uh, realistic human heart simulations uh, to identify the arrhythmic risk of existing and new drugs. And Stanford and uh, Uber Cloud also received an award for this project. Here you can see it, best, best, of, uh, best use of HPC in the cloud. And, you know, if you're interested in uh, reading more about this study or uh, if you want to learn more about studies that focus specifically in, into your uh, work area, you can actually um, go to our website at www.ubercloud.com and under resources, uh, you'll see case studies and you'll find here all of the case studies. Uh, so you can read these papers. Uh, so we have lots of them. And if you have any questions, so now you, know, you can ask them through the chat window. And also if you have any questions later, uh, you can email us at help at the ubercloud.com. 
and uh, we can even discuss how you can utilize the cloud. Uh, so, you know, feel free to contact us uh, about anything. And you can also get more information about Uber Cloud on, again, the ubercloud.com. And uh, this actually brings me uh, to the end of my presentation today. And I would like to thank you all for uh, joining. So, um, thank you. Yeah, hi, this is Thomas again. Any uh, questions from the rest of the uh, team members? Thank you so much for that, Ibu. Any questions um, that, uh, that we can take here? I think we have just a minute or two. Uh, but if you, if you have follow-on questions, please feel free to uh, email us um, at help at the .com or, or visit our website. Um, we can um, connect with you over there. Um, because this is a, um, a fairly personalized custom journey to the cloud for most, most of our customers. So it starts with a conversation. So we're happy to have that. And uh, we have folks from uh, UberCloud on the line as well. Any questions? Anything we can talk about now? Going once. Okay, there's a question. Uh, can I use design builder software or other customized software? Okay, that's a great question. Um, you can. Um, now, that's not out of the box. Um, so we have a, a series of, of partners. Um, uh, you saw a couple of them already in there, the Saw Systems. Uh, we have Ansys. We have uh, Numeka, we, who we partner with uh, uh, out of uh, Brussels. So there's a lot of uh, uh, out-of-the-box solutions. But if you have a very specific code that you use in your workflow, uh, please get in touch with us. We'll, we'll see what it takes to put that into our uh, into our platform. It's usually based on um, how popular it is, etc. cetera. Uh, but if you have a very customized version, we can do that too. So uh, one example would be UDFs, user-defined functions. We do that all the time for customers uh, who have specific functions that they've designed um, for themselves. We can, we can bake that into the platform. So each of these um, <coughs> uh, containers or, or uh, environments you see in the cloud, they're customized for you. Um, so uh, we, the, the short answer is yes, um, but the longer answer is we'll have to look at the, the specific case. Any other questions? All right, I think we're, we're running out of time here. So I'll, I'll just wrap up with uh, just a quick reminder of what we talked about right at the beginning. So the, the key message here is um, if you want to take advantage of of the technologies of the current revolution, the new technologies, the exciting technologies like AI, IoT, smart manufacturing, you really have to uh, free up some of your time by stop, uh, by, by, by not doing some of those uh, older things anymore, which is managing servers and managing uh, workstations, et cetera. Let a provider do it so that you can focus on those high value tasks. That's really the message we want to uh, leave you with here. And, um, Okay, scalability, there's a question. Um, scalability, uh, that's, uh, that's a broad topic. We saw a little bit of that in, the, um, in, in what we saw with, uh, with the ANSYS benchmark. Um, so it really depends on the problem. I'm not gonna tell you that any, every model is gonna scale exactly the same, but in our benchmarks, we have, um, we've done a lot of benchmarking with different classes of problems. So for example, CFD problems, uh, scale slightly differently than FEA problems. And within FEA problem, problems, a static structural analysis will, will scale differently than, uh, than a harmonic analysis, et cetera. So th those, those kinds of things um, happen. Um, 50,000 CPUs. OK, 50,000 CPUs is a big number. So we, we, um, it, it really depends on the class of problems. So we have run uh, our container on um, up to 1,000 cores. Um, in um, in Lawrence Livermore and um, using um, using an open form uh, open source software, um, fifty thousand is a is something that's uh, that's more in the high performance computing supercomputing range. Uh, we can talk about uh, about specifics. Um, that that's not a that's not a number that we've scaled our our platform up to. So most of our um, uh, users are using these clusters on demand um, uh, in the range of uh, one hundred twenty eight two hundred fifty six. Uh, you saw the benchmark for 512 cores. That's really the, the sweet spot of, uh, of what we do. That's where the, um, for tightly coupled workloads, um, the, the cloud excels. Any other questions?
Okay, well, uh, thank you so much, um, everybody, for joining. I'll follow up with some uh, uh, with, with with the slides and and the recording of the webinar that uh, you guys can access after the after um, and pass on to your colleagues as well. Thank you so much. Take care.